on this episode of the Rebel Report, both the UNLV men's and women's basketball teams lose in their season opener. But with the bad comes the good. UNLV football ends a six-game losing streak with a big upset victory for coach Tony Sanchez. We'll recap it all coming up. Also, the Mountain West Commissioner updates us on how the Raiders' future partnership with UNLV will benefit the conference. Speaking of the future, VGK defenseman Nate Schmidt is staying with the team for more years to come with an extension to his contract as he gets ready to finally return to the ice. All this and more next on the Rebel Report. Welcome to Sudi Up on the campus of UNLV. We're ready to bring you another action-packed episode of the Rebel Report. I'm Karina Trujillo. And I'm Michaela Jackson. Joining us for our Rebel Report timeout, Lady Rebels forward Jordan Bell in the studio to talk about not just the first game, but also her college career. Just like us, the Rebel Report team, she is also in the journalism program, so we're curious how sports and journalism impact her future career plans. Besides our UNLV teams, we'll also take a look back at the Las Vegas Lights first season, but for now, let's start off with the Runnin' Rebels. After a nail-biting victory in their only exhibition game, the Running Rebels look to kick off the season with a bang against Loyola Marymount on November 10th. Military Appreciation Night unfortunately ended with a lot of disappointed UNLV fans. The start of the game was a rough one for both teams, but especially for UNLV. For the first 10 minutes, the Rebels had 10 turnovers and 8 points. The final 10 minutes of the first half saw UNLV build a 7-point lead at the break, but Loyola turned on the scoring in the second half. A 13-0 run gave LMU a lead they would not give up. The Rebels ended up with 24 turnovers, more than any game total from the last season, and a loss, a home opener, for the second time under Coach Menzies, 61-50, the final. The Rebels took on UC Riverside November 13th with the Rebels winning 72-51 for the first win of the season. Bryce Hamilton and Travell Beck combined the, to score 28 points and did not miss any of their field goal attempts. Coach Kathy Olivier joined us in studio for our latest show to talk about the upcoming season for the Lady Rebels. Our team went to their season opener to see how the 2018 Mountain West champions performed in their first game. The Lady Rebels opened their season with a home game on November 9th against Wright State University. The Rebels have won their home opener 10 years in a row under head coach Kathy Olivier and we're looking for this game against Wright State to be their 11th. The Lady Rebels fell behind by nine in the first quarter, but late in the second quarter, they were able to tie up the game 22 to 22. Wright State managed to end the half with a three-pointer at the buzzer, gaining the lead 35 to 24. Senior center Katie Powell was the Lady Rebel of the game, scoring 14 points and grabbing set seven rebounds while senior forward Paris led UNLV with the nine rebounds. The team scored 15 points in the fourth quarter, but unfortunately it wasn't enough as the Rebels lost the, Ra the Raiders 68 to 52. We caught up with senior forward Jordan Bell after the game to talk about the team's dynamic moving forward. We had bits and pieces of uh, moments where we worked our defense very well, but we still need to get in practice and work it, keep, uh, come back and just try again because obviously it wasn't, it wasn't here tonight. Following the loss at home, the Lady Rebels took on UC Irvine November 13th, but unfortunately lost 57 to 55. Looking forward, the team hopes to score their first win of the season against Gonza on November 17th at Cox Pavilion. 
Rebel football made history November 10th, beating San Diego State in San Diego for the first time in 18 years. With a 27-24 final, the Rebels also end their six-game losing streak. There were moments where the Aztecs overpowered UNLV, including running back Jerwan Washington gaining 66 yards on 21 carries in the second quarter and a touchdown from wide receiver Tim Wilson in the third quarter. But the Rebels prevailed in the fourth quarter thanks to wide receiver Brendan Presley touchdown with the help of quarterback Max Gillum's 10-yard pass. By the end, running back Lexington Thomas scored their victory by scoring a touchdown with an incredible 75-yard run. Coach Tony Sanchez couldn't help but keep his excitement for this achievement. Hawaii will be the Rebels' last stop for their road trip, but don't worry, Rebel fans. UNLV plays their last home game of the season against their northern rivals, UNR, on November 24th. Will the Fremont Cannon stay blue or will it be painted red? Craig Thompson has been the commissioner of the Mountain West Conference since 1998 and has been continuously making changes and improvements in college sports arena for two decades now. Kaylin Sokel gives us a look at what Mountain West Commissioner Greg Thompson had to say. Since Craig Thompson took over as Commissioner of the Mountain West in 1998, we have seen a ton of changes from new coaches, new athletic directors, to the streaming of athletic events. Since becoming UNLV Athletic Director in June 2017, Desiree Reed Francois has brought new ideas to the Mountain West Conference. It's fantastic with her experiences in other parts of the country, West Coast, Cincinnati, Virginia Tech on the East Coast. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of creative uh, new ideas. One of the major changes in UNLV Athletics will be the partnership between Robo Football and the Raiders. You know, as long as UNLV has some flexibility and, and has the chance to, to not be hoodwinked or cornered into you cannot play on October 10th, 2022, uh, you know, I think it'll be fine. It'll be a great boon to, to Tony Sanchez and his program to recruit to uh, the newest, fanciest, shiniest, state-of-the-art facility out there. Along with the UNLV and Raiders partnership, the Mountain West foresees its future standing in the digital platform and that can mean to college sports fans and teams everywhere. It's going to get down to a situation of what are you most comfortable with? Can you do two, three, four, five things at once? Uh, connectivity in stadiums is important because they want to be doing a lot of other things in addition to watching that game. It's basically a, a situation of how do you want to receive your content? Even though the Mountain West is not the first one to partner with Stadium to stream athletic events, they do plan to further expand in this category. This is Kaylin Sokel with a Railway Report. The commissioner looks to further improve the conference and move it further into the digital age. The Vegas Golden Knights have been stuck in a long road trip away from home. After four games, the Knights return to the Fortress on Wednesday, November 14th. For the price of $36 million, Nate Schmidt will call Las Vegas home for a couple more years. Schmidt has signed a six-year extension with the Vegas Golden Knights. Last season, Nate Schmidt had 36 points in 19 penalty minutes in 76 games. He also participated in all 20 games of the Stanley Cup Finals. After violating the terms of the NHL Performance Enhancing Substance Program, a 20-game suspension say sent Schmidt 6,000 miles overseas. Schmidt spent some time in Austria practicing with the Capitals, but returns to play with the Knights on November 18th against the Edmund Oilers. The relationship with Nate has been great and with his agent has been great. Um, they filed for arbitration. We didn't file. They filed. And we've, <clears throat> I've, I've sort of made it clear over the years that if you file for arbitration, you're probably going. So, um, I was just being consistent in our approach, and um, um, but the relationship uh, is obviously in a really good place, otherwise this deal doesn't happen. The Vegas Golden Knights defense has been suffering this season. Schmidt may be the key to their success. The Las Vegas Lights ended their very first season, and looking back, they are a team with many firsts. 
from being the first professional soccer team to partner up with the marijuana dispensary to having a design inspired by Las Vegas, Marco Santander shows us what the team and the fans have to say about the upcoming season. The Las Vegas Lights are wrapping up their first season with many successes throughout it all. Las Vegas was the second largest city in the world without a professional soccer team. We are the entertainment capital of the world. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world. It matched perfectly. The first year of the light season is ending. From having emojis on the uniform, doing the first ever cash drop, and even having a local cancer survivor make the first goal of a night, the team is anything but a regular one. And this season was one to learn a lot from. We were always there close in each game and, you know, at the end of the day we didn't put the ball away and, you know, we gave goals that we shouldn't have conceded, but you know, it's part of the game. Like I told you, it's the first year there were hiccups and, you know, you learn from it. Now it's flip the page. And I think it's, you're bringing in all new players who don't really know each other, haven't played together, and you're, you're kind of throwing them into, into a different environment. Um, and obviously the hardest part for us is probably, you know, losing some games that we think we could have won and uh, overall not getting re the results we wanted. The bar was set high for the lights and through all the games, the fans stayed loyal, supporting the team through thick and thin. We just want to thank him for giving them, uh, giving us uh, a reason to come and yell and play and do what we do. Thank you so much for just starting this team and for letting us run wild and being loud and being ourselves and uh, supporting the team, basically. Keep it up. Don't worry about the haters. Uh, just next year, let's do this right and let's be louder and prouder in the stands. Even though the team didn't qualify for the playoffs, the players and staff are thankful for the connection they established with the community and the support they receive from the fans. Oh, well, obviously we're very thankful, you know, we're really happy for their support and, you know, everything that, that we went through, they went through it with us and, you know, at the end of the day, we back this city up the way they back it up and, you know, we're just grateful and thankful for everything. Just want to thank the fans for a heck of a season. Um, they are always supporting us uh, from the very first game uh, to the last game. Even uh, if it was a tough season on the field, I think the fans were always there, very supportive, and I think that's something that all the players are proud of. Thank you. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for coming on this journey with us. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you from day zero, before we ever started, uh, for coming out and cheering us on and being a part of this journey. Um, and, and stick with us, right? This, this, this train has left the station and it's just gonna gain more and more, more, more steam. And we're gonna do something really, really special. The lights average around 7,000 fans per game this season, leaving a lot of expectation for the new one. For the Rubber Report, I'm Marco Santander. The new season expected to start March 2019. The league announced they will start a 33-week season instead of a 34. Now we're sending it over to Naomi with Jordan Bell. Rebel Report, time out. Thanks so much, guys. On this week's Rebel Report timeout, we have Jordan Bell, UNLV women's basketball senior forward. Hi, Jordan. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here today for this no interview. Um, we have to talk about it. You're here. 2018 Mountain West Conference Champions. Um, how was that? How did that feel to win that title? Uh, nothing short but amazing. Uh, we worked so hard last year. Um, and it all paid off and it feels good uh, to have that title, just knowing that, you know, we were one of the best teams because we were co-champions. We were one of the best teams in the conference and um, it was definitely deserved. Yeah. How was that like the ending of that championship game? Like how, what was that feeling like right as you won? Oh, it was surreal. Everybody's cheering, the confetti is flying. Um, we're all happy, like, you know, verge of tears, happy tears and everything. And it was just amazing. Um, just like one of the best moments, top five moments of my life. Yeah, I've been to um, the UNLV Women's Basketball Office and I've seen the trophy with the hoop and everything. Yeah. That's amazing, amazing to see it in person. Um, talking now uh, to this season, um, so far we've had, two, you guys had two losses, um, one against Wright State and then one recently against uh, UC Irvine. The UC Irvine game, that was a two point loss. Can you tell us like um, about that loss and how that game went about? Um, it was tough. You see Irvine, they're a feisty team. Um, we kind of un underestimated them and just how quick they were and uh, their zone dropping us and whatnot. Um, it was a tough loss for me personally because uh, the girl made the last bucket on like while I was defending her. And um, it's been rough. 
and we come in practice, we have positive attitudes, we're taking it one game at a time, just trying to find our niche, trying to find our, what makes us go, um, and develop our offense as much as we do our defense. Yeah, most definitely. And then what kind of things does Coach Kathy Olivier, Coach Kao, um, tell you guys in practice to better your, your game? It uh, starts off with communication. She was really big on wanting us to talk more and be on the same page and get to know each other, um, both offensively and defensively. Um, but she's always encouraging, and she there's no doubt in her mind that we're going to get it together. Yeah, and with a lot of new girls, how is how's that chemistry been, and how do you like the new girls on the team? Oh, I love them. I love them all. Um, from the quietest ones to the loudest ones, I want to say we have six new girls. Maybe like six new players, period, um, actually hitting the floor of the season. And, um, you know, it might be, it was rough in the beginning getting everybody on the same page and everything, but we have a flow in practice at least that we need to translate over to the games. But um, I love those girls to death, and, you know, I would never want any other teammates to be around me. Yeah, for sure. And then we had Coach Kale, Coach Kathy Olivia, your head coach, here on the show, our last episode. And she said, and I quote, she loves to see you guys get better as basketball players and as people. And she said that you guys really represent the community very well. Um, how has it been having Coach Kale as your coach? And how has she helped you even outside of basketball? She's amazing from the recruiting process back when I was in high school to now she's never changed. She's always been the same like, goofy personality, super smiley, super bright, um, always positive, you know, always believes in you. She's always been the same and it's, it's the best feeling when you have a coach that has confidence in you. And um, as far as outside of basketball, she pushes you to be a better person, period. Um, she recruits people who are good people who could be even better people. Um, and it's just like amazing to have a great relationship with her, like how we do. Uh, from the moment I stepped on foot, stepped foot on campus, she's always been like trying to make me better, trying to get me to reach my highest potential. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, we would love to ask you, you know, we know that you're a journalism major, you are in the uh, public relations track. Mm -hmm. How do you think basketball and journalism is going to fit into your future? You know, basketball will always be a part of my life outside of college or out after college is done. Um, but it's opened a lot of avenues for me to actually um, like make connections with in the PR industry and stuff. And um, just like athletics period helped me get my internship and um, always helping me reach out to more people and try and get me into different job opportunities, different situations that allow me to actually be in the field outside or after I'm done with uh, college. And how do you like uh, public relations, like that track here at UNLV? I love it. Um, didn't start off thinking I would even be here. Uh, went from psychology all the way down the line through every <laughs> everything you could ever think of. But um, when I figured out what uh, IMC and public re relations was, I was like, wow, that really fits me. Social media, being active in the community, talking to people. Yeah. That's just all, all the stuff that I love to do. Yeah. So um, it just fit perfectly with me and it's, it's been my passion ever since. Yeah, social media is huge in this industry especially. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us no today. No problem, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, now we're gonna throw it over to the panel discussion with Jolanda. Thanks, Naomi. Welcome to this week's panel discussion. Today we have Brandon McGregory, Kaylin Sokal, and Jason Toktagian. So Brandon, the running Rebels are off to a tough start this season. What do you believe they can do to improve? Well, I believe they can do a few things, actually. So, um, you know, last game they had 22 turnovers, 22. Wow. So, that's one thing that I really think they need to capitalize on. And another thing is, um, you know, I went to watch uh, their first game and I feel I just felt like there was a lack of, of team chemistry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I feel like once they they get that together, they'll be able to succeed for the rest of the season. Uh, keep in mind that it's only the beginning of the season. So I feel like they'll, they're just getting started. So they'll be okay. okay. I think so. Well, that's great. So Kaylin. Despite the harsh season that our UNLV Rebel football team had, do you believe there is any hope for us? 
there is hope because beating San Diego State, a team you haven't beat in San Diego since 2000, is quite an accomplishment. That's one of t head coach Tony Sanchez's marquee wins. The other being Reno, his first in his first season, winning the Cannon. And this will help build momentum at the end of the season and to start next year when he should be when he should make a bowl game. And this year, Lexington Thomas, a senior, won another award, and he he had two long runs, one touchdown run of 75 yards, two he had two touchdowns, over 100 yards rushing, and that speaks volumes about who he is as a player, and he stepped up when Charles Williams didn't have his greatest game after the previous game he ran for over 100 yards. Thank you, Kaylin. So, Jason, now that Vegas Golden Knights' Nate Schmidt is back after his 20-game suspension, what do you think he's going to bring to the team? Well, we're going to be seeing Nate Schmidt back officially with uh, the Golden Knights when they're on the road with the Edmont against the Edmonton Oilers with uh, Connor McDavid and the crew. So he's going to have his first real test with some high-paced offense. And, of course, I mean, it's, we've talked about it so many times, how important he is as a defensive player. So this is going to be a good way to get him integrated, get some of the rust off, and I think it's going to be a great way for the Golden Knights to potentially take advantage of more defensive players coming in. Now, now we do know that the Golden Knights still have it in them to play good defense, good offense. I mean, recently they won 5-0 against the Anaheim Ducks, which is amazing. So we're going to, we cannot wait for the Edmonton Oilers game, and we also cannot wait for the Golden Knights to come back from the road uh, tenure whenever they're going to be playing the Calgary Flames. Right. And we already know that when the Golden Knights play the Calgary Flames with uh, Nate Schmidt back, it's going to be uh, definitely, definitely a game we don't want to miss and definitely see how he's going to take the uh, home crowd back with him. Thank you for speaking on this week's panel discussion. Thanks, guys. Sports are made to entertain audiences and showcase some of the world's greatest athletes, and the Runnin' Rebels want to win over the community. The team hosted a special event for the ladies of the community. Marco Santander has more on what the <laughs> ladies did for the day. The UNLV men's basketball team is giving fans an opportunity to feel what it's like to be a Runnin' Rebel for a day. The Slam Dunk Social for Ladies has been going on for about 10 years, allowing fans from the community to get together with the student athletes and coaching staff, many coming back to enjoy an afternoon with the Runnin' Rebels, while newcomers are going with high expectations. Well, I didn't know about it until I heard from my friend Peggy, and she told me kind of what we were going to do. You know, we get to, to see the players and talk to them, we get to shoot some baskets, and we get to socialize a bit, so it sounds all fun to me. It's because of events like these that fans enjoy being part of the Rebel family. Well, yeah, it's make it more fun. Well, we're, we're basketball donors, so therefore we come to all the basketball games have for 20 years. Nice. After the ladies went through the five different stations, they loved every second of it. I thought the experience was wonderful. We had a great time, and I appreciated all the time that the trainers and the coaches took with us. You know, and the players were just wonderful. They were patient with us too, you know. <laughs> but uh, learning the different moves and things and training programs that the players go through was most interesting too. If you haven't been to this event before, the ladies and staff have a message for you. You better get over here. <laughs> this is fun, guys. You know, I just think that, uh, you know, that people don't know about it that's why. Uh, and come, that's why I had to come before. Check it out, you're gonna have fun, you won't regret it. Um, I know some people are probably scared, oh no, basketball, but you know, there's, we have all ages, you know, kids that come all the way up to um, 80 year olds. My grandma even came out just, and she's in a wheelchair. Um, so it's just, it's open to any and everyone, any skill level, and just come check it out and have fun and support our student athletes. After the drills were done, the fans were able to do a Q&A with the wives of the coaches and staff, bringing them that much closer to the UNOV family. For the Rubber Report, I'm Marco Santander. The Slam Dunk Social hosted around 50 ladies this year, and the staff is looking forward to have more people for the 2019 event.
earlier in November, the Shriners Hospital for Children Open came to an end. But before the tournament, Shriners patients took a part in Media Day. I got the chance to talk with three Shriners patients about their journey with the hospital. Shriners Open is not just about the golf. It's about helping kids get life-saving treatments. It was media day for the tournament, and let's just say Shriners patients showed up in style. Shriners Open 2017 champion Patrick Cantley also tacked along for the ride. And Shriners patient Christian Gray couldn't help but enjoy the helicopter experience. Easily the, uh, the helicopter ride. It was so much fun. I've never done that before. I've always been in like a plane, but never a helicopter, and that was so much fun. Once the press conference ended, the focus was all on the patients. One of the elements Shriners Hospital for Children focuses on is making sure their patients participate in activities. And that's exactly what they did at Media Day. Patrick and the patients had a miniature putt face-off with a twist by using VGK hockey sticks instead of putters. I don't know. I feel like the putting game was pretty fun. I mean, even though Christian overshot it, it was fun. <laughs> wow, okay. She just called you out. She did. It's out of love. It's okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why she would call me out. I mean, she's not the pro. I wanted the pro. I didn't get the pro. I just got the high schooler. But it's okay, I guess. Taylor and Patrick pulled out the win, and this was one of Patrick's favorite moments of the day. But Taylor and I just won the putting competition with the hockey sticks. Malia's a little bitter about it, but we are feeling really nice about our win. So I'd say that's the highlight so far. Ever since Taylor was two, she has been a patient. She was diagnosed with dysplastic scoliosis and had 19 surgeries on her back. And she can't help but thank Shriners for what they have done for her. It means a lot. Like, I wouldn't be here if, like, you know, I didn't have Shriners. And, yeah, they've done a lot for me. And high school senior Christian has been a patient for seven years for the treatment of spinal bifida, Milo Meninja Seal. And Shriners means the world to him. Uh, it means everything to me. They've done so much for me uh, due to medical reasons. They, I was not a confident or medical or independent person before I was in Shriners. And because of them and the procedures they've done for me, they've helped me so much to become the person I am today. Malia has been a Shriners patient for 16 years. At just 18 months old, she undergone an amputation and received her first prosthetic leg. Shriners has been a major part of her life. Uh, it's really like my second family, honestly. Like I go to camps and I meet my friends that I've talked to almost every day. Um, I've been able to do a lot of sports that I enjoy. It's been super fun. I just get it. I get to go to a lot of stuff like this, which I think helps because I used to be super shy and like now I'm kind of getting out of it and I think this is helping too, which makes it really nice that I can actually talk to people. The hospitals have been able to help millions of children and you can help today by donating to or by going to ShrinersHospitalForChildren.org. That's all we have for now for this week's Rebel Report. We hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving while we enjoy our week off from the show. Fortunately for us, we do have a break. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter at Rebel Report UNLV for more stories and updates. And on Instagram at Rebel Report underscore UNLV. See you next time.